Saving for your children's education. That's our topic today on the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay. We're going to talk about these child education funds. You know, how do you budget when you're already maybe financially maxed out? Uh, What's a good way to go about saving this money? When should you get started and what kind of a difference is this going to make? To tell us about this and more, Derek Chase from Chase & Associates, licensed insolvency trustee serving Vancouver Island, Sunshine Coast, BC, and BC North Coast joins me now. Derek, thanks for being on the show today. Oh, hi, Wayne. Uh, You're very welcome. I'm really excited about today's topic. This is a topic we need every parent to listen to. Do you have kids at that age Mm. where you've had to use uh, the savings for their education yet? Uh, Yes, uh, yes, we have ourselves. So um, happy to pass on that experience and also just what uh, I know in general about the topic. Yeah, I bring it up because uh, as a dad who we had to do that as well, we saved up a lot of cash for the kids' education. We really saw the benefits of it. So that's good. You and I will both be able to to be able to share some information because sometimes, especially like right now, a lot of families may be having a little bit of a tough time when it comes to savings, but the importance of this is, I mean, we can't express it enough, can we? You really can't. And it, it's one of those things that's um, easy to kick down the road into the future and say, I'll deal with it later. But it's, uh, it's hard to imagine, um, you know, 15 years down the road or 10 years down the road, just how important this topic can be. And it's, uh, it, it really is hard. It's a, it's a tough situation when your, your life's busy, you're, you know, you're working, you probably have a young family, you got all sorts of demands on your time and your money. And, uh, you know, how do you go about handling that? How do you go about prioritizing things and, and giving your, kids and opportunities to succeed and uh, it's a good thing to think about and to put some energy into making choices around yeah I, i'm loving the show already so what's some of your advice like how do you even save when your budget's already maxed out it's a really good question and i don't think anyone's ever felt like hey i've got all this excess money and what do i do with it, it, it that's that's quite the uh, exception as opposed to the normal situation the normal situation is you're trying to make the month work and you're having all these uh, people around you giving you helpful advice about, well, you need to save for your retirement. You need to save for a rainy day fund. You know, you need uh, to think about your kids' education and what they're going to do. And it just seems impossible sometimes to to satisfy all those things. But um, I, I think the way to to really frame it is not to have to do it all at once and and get to the finish line all at once it's it's really framing it in the terms of five year increments or or some longer range goals and really just to to kind of get the ball rolling just just in the tiniest amounts i i think is the the way to approach it mm-hmm. and Specifically for for children's education, uh, there is a a product called a Registered Education Savings Plan or an RESP, which is which is an excellent way to to do this for your children. Mainly because the the government will contribute some money to that as well. Now there are limitations to that uh, maximum contributions over the lifetime into a plan like that is $50,000 and the maximum contributions that the government will put in would be $7,200. Again, those numbers are big. There's there's no way I'm ever going to do that in 2023 or 2022. But, you know, I always tell people to, to start small, start now. Mm-hmm. And to uh to even get it going at at $25 a month is is a powerful thing to do and i think taking that even even further um you know what if you don't have the $25 you know what if it's it's all going to to food or to um you know some other housing or or whatnot uh, i like to think about you know what's your what's your circle of people like you know there's 
there's often settings, I think, especially when children are young, that uh, the uh, the grandparents or the aunt and uncle or the really close personal friends, you know, they want to get presents, and which is a natural thing to do. And in my mind, um, it's pretty special to give the present of education. So making that gift into an RESP is going to have some lot better long-term results than buying some plastic toy that might get, you know, five or 10 minutes of attention and then is gone. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a matter of communicating that, that talking about it with your, with your, um, family and, and friends and, and also internally with your own close family and saying, what, what are we going to prioritize here? And, you know, we always suggest to people to, the first step is just to get that rainy day fund in the bank, a little bit of money in the bank. But again, accomplishing these, all these goals all at once, I think is impossible. I think you have to take a very small monthly outlook to that and and make it so small that you never think it'll make a difference because that way the the savings will continue on month after month and and not be interrupted and it has to be so, an automatic uh, it has to be automatic withdrawal i mean if you have to set it aside you know out of your you're never going to do that so it's got to be something that comes right out of your bank account and goes directly into that resp fund right it, that i think that we all know that now yeah, I would agree with that, and certainly something that you're you're doing manually, you're you're bound to forget. Yeah, and maybe not restart. So having the the preauthorized transfer is fabulous. Maybe the the one time bump up contributions comes from grandpa and grandma sure. at, uh, at at birthday time, sort of thing. So as a, a parent who went went through this, I'm so grateful we did because. Um, you know, like we, we were a one income family and uh, money was tight, but it was a priority for my wife to make sure that she was, you know, putting this money aside for the kids education. And after they get out of school and especially now, if we look at students finishing their career, you're coming out of there with, you know, the uh, the debt school debt uh, and then you got to try to find a rental and life is so expensive. Now it really is a leg up for anybody who can do this for their kids. So I, I'm, once again, I, it's such an important thing. So how do you go about doing this? Like where's a good place to put the savings? Well, as as I mentioned, um, would be my advice would be the RESP. So you could start with uh, whichever financial services place you're dealing with, whether that's your bank or whether it's some type of investment advisor, uh, just letting them know that there's a, there's a child in the picture here and because um, they can't read your mind, uh, they, they need to know what changes have happened in your family. So, uh, and if that's a, a priority, they'll, they'll take the steps to set up the account and set up the, the, uh, the automatic contribution. So the spot to accumulate it is within an RESP and the place to find that is going to be at your financial services um, provider, whether that be a bank or somewhere else. Right. And when do you start? Yeah, I think uh, I think you want to like if it were a question you're thinking about right now, you, you would want to start it before the end of the year. Again, this uh, government is going to contribute some money into that as well, uh, tw up to twenty percent up to. Uh, a maximum of 500 every year. So in other words, if you put a thousand dollars in there into that plan this year, the government's going to put 200. So that's like free money, right? That's a 20% return right off the pop. I always say uh, starting sooner rather than later is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And um, even if you didn't have a thousand dollars to do it, if you had a hundred dollars, like just get it rolling and, and get that subsequent monthly, monthly contribution going um, each month. And before you know it, uh, time time flies, as you know, Wayne. And uh, as a result, five years will be be uh, down the road, and you'll have a nice little chunk of money there. And I, I couldn't agree more. Just with your earlier statement, it, it gives your kids just so many more options uh, when they're graduating from high school and, and deciding what to do at that point. Mm. Yeah, we never told them they had this fund either until until they graduated. That was another important oh, wow. part. So it's like we kept it 
kind of quiet. And then uh, yeah, it worked out it, wonderful. So, and, and here's the other side of it now is that uh, I've just become a grandpa and the Livia is the little baby who's going to be three weeks old. She is three weeks old today. And we are already discussing this. So it's a perfect time for us to be having this show. And they've already, I think they're just about to set up the RESP. So that's three weeks old. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And the real beauty of that is by starting it so quickly, you're going to have a full 17, 18 years of compounding in that plan that will really help that money grow and and be there, um, be available. So again, starting it at, at, at three weeks is quite spectacular but uh you know if someone started it when the child was 10 that's great as well yeah. but you've missed out on 10 years of compounding and and tax regrowth within there so it's it the uh, sooner sooner the better is is never more true than when you have a, a fixed timeline here of before uh, um, a child is going to grow up and, and graduate from high school and and then face uh further education expenses and choices I bet you that you're very similar to me is that when you would run into people, especially after you can put your kids through school with that RESP, when I would run into new parents, I would tell them, you know, we did not have the money to be putting this away, but we did. We made it a priority. There was the, uh, whatever the, the child benefits and all that kind of stuff that all went directly into the RESP. And I always tell them to start it as quickly as they possibly can, because I had no idea how much it would grow. Yeah, as far as the, the growth goes, it's hard to understand uh, how much money can grow over time and until you start looking at some of the charts. And when you project out over 10 years or 15 years, it's it's really quite dramatic. And then, you know, ultimately it comes down to making choices around what's important for you. You know, is it important for you to spend $100 on entertainment or is it important to save $100 for your child's future? And when you start framing things in that sort of decision matrix, I, I think most people would want to uh, have the savings for their child. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what are other uh, words of advice do you have regarding uh, saving for RESPs? Well, like I mentioned earlier, there's lots of different uh, places pulling for your money and time and attention, but certainly doing something even very modest can have dramatic positive factors in influencing your your child's education down the road so go for it even if it's only 20 or 25 dollars a month mm -hmm. yeah makes all the difference also you know what you mentioned uh you know grandparents getting involved aunts uncles uh gifts that's become a popular thing as well as i actually know of somebody i work with where the grandma set up a resp for the kids when they were born because you know, she's already paid off all the things she needs to. There's rules, though, when it comes to who can set up an RESP, is there not? Or there's there can only be one? Yeah, that's something I would probably defer to the, the specific rules surrounding that. I would defer that to the financial services provider, that there's always rules around these things, and I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on that. I just think it's good to get the ball moving and... Uh, and, and take their advice as to how to max out your contributions if possible. Yeah. Okay. Well, any other final words? It sounds like we've covered a lot of it. It's basically get started as soon as you possibly can. Oh, here's the one. If somebody comes into a, a bunch of money, let's say all of a sudden they get an inheritance of $10,000, can they then put that total amount into the RESP and play catch up and get grant money, you know, 20% on that, or is it maxed out per year? Uh, there's a, a lifetime contribution of 50,000 into the RESP, I believe. And then the, uh, the grant money from the government is, is topped out at 7,200, which is at a 20% uh, contribution rate. So again, you'd want to take advice from the financial advisor as to how to best sprinkle that into the uh, RESP to get full advantage of the grants. Okay, that's great. I'm glad we touched on this topic. Derek, thank you very much for doing this show today. Oh, it was my pleasure, Wayne. You have a great day. Once again, my guest today was Derek Chase. If you can learn more, schedule that free consultation with Chase & Associates, licensed insolvency trustee, 
through their website, bankruptcytrusteebc.ca. That is it for today's That Matters podcast. Now make sure you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And of course, if you want more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.